in the city, the men would gather at what they called surgeras, and they were coffee houses. And they were all on the east side. And the men would just sit and play cards and drink Armenian coffee all day long. Okay, I think we're ready. Well, my name is Robert J. Kazanjan Jr. The Armenian name um, would be Kazanjan, uh, but spelled incorrectly because of my grandfather coming to this country, Dallas Island. They just sort of listened to the name and spelled it the way they thought it should be spelled. The genocide for me was something that was extremely important because I, I feel that um, my ancestry was stolen. So I can really only go back on my mother's side as far as my grandparents. I have no idea who my great grandparents were. The east side of Niagara Falls, um, which is where the church is today, that's why the church was built there, because many of the Armenians lived on the east side. The Haneshian family and the Syrian family, the Azivians, and there was um, Gurdigians, and the Jangochen family, the Dunton Street. There was an Otun Meridian fa family, and they owned a hotel and it was really like a hostel. So any Armenian that came to this country that didn't have a place to stay, they would go there and then the Meridians would find them jobs and the, so that they could go and move on to find their own home and whatever. So there were uh, many Armenian families here. The Dardarians, the Hugashians, the, us, the Koshans, they owned restaurants. And they were funny because they were never in competition with each other. We owned um, a quality restaurant that was on Niagara Street, which was just a little coffee shop. And then we had the Manhattan restaurant. You know, before the church was built, we would um, rent out St. Peter's Episcopal Church on Rainbow Boulevard. And they would allow us to have our divine liturgy there, which is our we call it Badarak in Armenian. The church was consecrated in, I think, probably in 1954. And we were really the first Sunday school class that they had, so we were all very little children. We had an Alice Avdoyan, Ani Avdoyan's mother, taught us Armenian. She, had, she would hold Armenian classes for us. But you know, we were always together, and you, you, you were a family. It didn't, um, it was just the way we lived. We, we didn't think anything different of it. Um, this is a pic this is a picture of my uncle, who um, was really the first American-born gentleman to become an Armenian priest. Vaskin Tatoyan. Um, when you become a priest, they change your name. So he was Gregory Klikod, and he was ordained in May of '54, and he first served as a deacon here. You know, he was a pastor for parishes because, you know, there was a shortage of priests even then. So he would be, he had Niagara Falls, he had St. Catharines, Toronto, and Montreal. And so every week he was in a different city. His base was naturally our home because that's where he lived. I was very close to him, I, I really was, because I, you know, I bonded with him, he was my uncle. And in our home, we, we um, I said that it was very much a Otawi, generational home, my grandparents, my uncle, and um, we all lived together. I'm, I'm on the board of the uh, trustee of Oakwood Cemetery, but as a child, um, my grandmother and I, we would walk here, and we'd water flowers at Armenian graves. I mean, that's what you did. And then we would pray at Armenian graves, and my uncle would come and bless a grave, and we would say prayers, and he would burn incense at the at the grave, and it was a blessing that you would do. And he would be he would do that on anniversaries of people's death or whatever. So as a child, I was here at Oakwood, and I don't know. I guess Armenians ended up being buried here because it was the city cemetery, and they lived here, so. That's where 
that's where they decide to buy graves and so forth. But there are over 600 Armenians that are buried here. Being Armenian, I mean, family is your center of your world. I mean, that's just the way it is. And you would never think of not being close to your grandparents or your aunts and uncles. I mean, that that was just the way you lived. And you never thought any different of it. And, and I think that, I think all Armenian families were the same. They, you know, you, they, they had their pods of families, but they, as a community, we became a family. I mean, when I walk in the Armenian church, I feel I'm home. And, and that, that, that feeling will never be taken away. And I don't have to be in that church for a year. But the moment I walk in those doors, I feel that I am at home. That's one thing I would want the generations to come, that come, that haven't been born yet, that need to always be taught what happened and that how we survived it and that Armenians are strong and we are survivors and that we never will forget and we move on and we continue to carry on the traditions of being very proud Armenians.